everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you all for being here today for chapel. For those of you who have traveled far distances, shorter distances, the flu, who are here for gathering days, I appreciate your presence here with us today. And I'm just so thankful for all the new faces and new um, Before we begin, I would like to say a couple of um, thanks to the people who helped put this service together. Um, Frank Kirko is our musician every week, and he is going to be leading us in song. So thank you to Frank for being here today. Um, we have Sarah Goodwin, who is one of the Journey students. She's preaching today, so thank you, Sarah, for your willingness for that. So we do have a correction. Um, Miguel Torre cannot be here today. Um, the fire department came to his house due to a refrigerator malfunction. So he is not here, but thankfully we have the Rev. Dr. Tom Wolf, our president of the university, here to serve communion for us um, as a backup. So thank you for being so willing and last minute to be here. <laughs> um, I'd also like to say thank you to Asa Holly, who's also a journey student, for reading our prayer guide and invitation time. That's always such a wonderful way to hear a different voice each week. So we thank you for, for that. Um, before we say our words of welcome, for those of you who maybe aren't uh, Methodists are used to the Methodist tradition. The WS in the Psalms is worship and song. It's the green book you picked up. The FWS is faith we sing, and it's the black book you picked up. I don't think there's a United Methodist hymnal used today, but we do have them in the front pew as well as a Bible if you'd like to read along with our scripture. So let's begin. In the midst of the day, in the midst of the world, the God of the cosmos meets us where we are to refresh and renew our spirits. Thanks, Thanks be to God, who made all that is and who is making all things new. Would you stand and sing?
receive again the breath of life. Let our minds begin to slow, to calm, to quiet, to release the chatter and worry, the planning and control, the questions and critiques, until we become aware of wonder. Let our bodies know the peace of this place and release their tightness, admit in their tiredness. Unclenched and unfurled and restful trust. Let our spirits lay down their burdens and open up to the presence that bids us welcome. 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 Let our hearts unfold layer by layer to reveal the tenderness that has been planted. <coughs> Dwell in mystery. You are above and beyond all things, yet you come to us in the person of Jesus, in the faces of our loved ones and neighbors, in the gentle embrace of friends, in the company of strangers. You know our burdens, our fears, our hurts, and hopes and happiness. You know our passions, our dreams, our resentments, and our hesitations. And not only ours, but those of each person in our lives, each member of this community, every nation and ecosystem in this your beloved creation. And so we give thanks for all that brings joy and peace hope and celebration, pleasure and amusement, assurance and excitement, to our lives and to the lives of our neighbors. We offer to you now all that weighs heavy on our hearts, our prayers for ourselves, our loved ones, our community, and our world. healing and holiness, you long for right relationship for all your children and every living thing. We long for that, too, to be whole where we are broken, to live in harmony with ourselves, with you, with our neighbors, and with the world. Yet we struggle for one reason or another, to live out our ideals to abide in your vision. And we find it difficult to move forward when we don't acknowledge the truth of where we are. So we come before you now, trusting in your abiding love to tell the truth about ourselves, our fears and failures, our faults and human finitude. God of living 
with compassion. We thank you for the assurance that whatever we have done or left undone, however we have fallen short of our own or your hopes for us, nothing can separate us from your love in Jesus Christ. By your love, we are embraced, reconciled, forgiven, made safe, whole, and free. May our lives reflect our awareness and gratitude for this truth in all that we do. And we say together, thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Known, 
in territory. Beyond that, no one knew what lay ahead. The crew of the Dodge Rider knew only to travel east towards Adlands country at the end of the world. The adventures that they encountered along the way were the result of faith, fate, and the sheer determination to bring home those who had been lost. When I started here at Isle of Winter in 2014, I had a lot in common with a certain hobbit, Mr. Wilbur Waggins. I was embarking on an adventure, but one that had a definitive destination, a goal, a place to be at a specific point in time. But now I've got a quarter and a half of my sitting here under my belt, and I realize that maybe the voyage of the Dawn Treasure is one of my favorite books of all time for a surprising reason. Because, like Caspian, Edmund, Lucy, and Eustace, I have no idea where I'm going at all whatsoever. I am the Dawn Treasure, sailing wherever Aslan's breath blows me. But I'm not the only one with that story. I see Peregrinatio in many of the stories of my fellow journey students, and the stories of the many resident students that I have come to know. So many of us are here not because we know what we're going to do, but because we simply know that this is where we're supposed to be for right now. Our fast-paced American secular way of life tells us that we've got to have it all figured out in order to be successful. That we, at any age or stage in our lives, have to get it. Have to understand why we're doing the crazy, impossible, impractical, spiritual things that we are doing. But our fast-paced American way of life would be wrong. We do not have to get it. We can be led by the Spirit, by the breath of Aslan, that wonderful metaphor for Christ, and it's okay. In the words of the great theologian and wizard, Gandalf the Grey, not all who wander are lost. I leave you with this, that there is a point to Peregrinatio, a destination of sorts. It is the haven of our resurrection. Celtic Christianity is full of stories of wandering monks, abbesses, and saints, the greatest of whom was St. Columba, who was called to leave behind his beloved Derry in Ireland. For a great unknown in Scotland, Alba of the Between Brows, in his own words, eventually St. Columba founded the monastery of Iona, a place where he and countless others in all the centuries since have found a place of spiritual renewal of personal transformation, of love, and of resurrection. Peregrinatio challenges us to embrace the unknown with joy, with determination, and with hope. The goal is to wander where the Spirit leads us, with the expressed understanding that where we are, so Christ is, and where Christ is, so is love, and where love is, so is change. It is this love that we carry with us into the unknown that hopefully leads us to calling many places home, to bring a home for others who are seeking a place, just like us, to be resurrected within this physical world. And of course, we may hope that we might become an impetus of resurrection in others. Too often, I've had some of the more cynical characters of my life refer to seminary, to this seminary, as cemetery. Let us not fall into that trap. The Spirit led us here, did it not? We are all on our own peregrinatio, pursuing a spiritual journey with stops, starts, detours, and adventures that we could never anticipate. When I first walked through the doors of Iowa two years ago, I felt like I was sick. This is not a place where our spirits come to die, but a place for our spirits to be reborn. I am not the same 20 something year old who stepped into this chapter of 2014. I will not be the same 30 something year old I am now when it's time for me to finally leave. As we go forth in the next few days to our classes and then for us journey students to our homes and places far and wide, let us not forget that Iowa is not 
a destination. It is a haven of resurrection, not the literal resurrection, but a resurrection, a renewal and reimagining of ourselves in this life, in this time. Island is a haven where we can stop along our life's journeys to learn, to gather, to struggle, to wrestle with God and with ourselves, but it is just a brief stop. One of many hopes that stretch beyond us into the future outside of these walls. Let us enjoy this time, this place, no matter who we are, where we're from, or for the reasons that brought us here. Let us remind ourselves that the point here is not our GPA, it is not graduation, it is not even coordination. The point is peregrinatio, the journey, the change, the resurrection, the renewal, however painful all of that might be or might become. Let us linger with one another, let us love one another. And in the words of the Celtic saints that came before us, as recorded in the Carmina Gadelica, let us pray. Life be in my speech, sense in what I say, the bloom of cherries on my lips till I come back again, the love of Christ Jesus gave by filling every heart for me, and the love that Christ Jesus gave filling me. Turn it on, please. If you've been around here at all, you've heard me say this before. It's one of my favorite times of a term in this gathering week. And so we really welcome you from north, south, east, and west. I hope that you know that um, this island, this place, 
is your home place. And that we see that wherever you are, you are always consistently connected to who, the, to this place, and thus to each other. And today we celebrate communion, and a foundation of that is understanding that deep connection that we have in the face of, through the face that we share. So welcome home, and welcome to the power and the presence of this table that is always before us, always. May God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give God of the universe, you are unimaginable light. You spoke into the void and brought forth order and beauty from chaos. You created the earth and all its creatures, life and nature in glorious, diverse harmony. You formed humankind in your image to rejoice in your company and to enjoy with you the good and gentle world that you have made. When we turned away from your loving gaze, you still beheld us as beloved, never failing in your care or companionship. Wherever we have wandered, whatever obstacles we have raised between ourselves and you, you have faithfully journeyed with us, unveiling your purpose, power, and providence, time and again. You lead us out of captivity, fulfilling your promise each day to guide us toward healing and wholeness. And so, together with all who call on your name, all who have journeyed this way before us, we praise you and join in their joyful song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name. We praise you, O God, and the one who came as your Son and anointed Jesus the Christ. He lived for you and for your kingdom, a man of prayer and parable, living among us as one of us, bringing your life into startling clarity. He practiced holy holiness, welcoming the outcast, lifting up the lowly, binding the brokenhearted, confounding those in power. He opened his heart to the world you had made. And the powers of the world so feared the depth of his tenderness and truth that they could not let him live. But in striking down this Jesus, the powers set him free to become Christ to all the cosmos, illuminating, dark, illuminating darkness, reconciling enemies, and blurring the line between sacred and secular, mundane and holy, human and divine. On the night before he died, Jesus gathered with his friends for Passover. And in that sacred meal, he took ordinary bread, gave thanks to you, and broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat, this is my body. Though broken, it lives on in you giving you strength to face what lies ahead. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the supper, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and cast it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. Like this wine, I have poured out my, my life in love and forgiveness, signed a new covenant for you and for many. Do this in remembrance of me. And so, God of life, abundant and eternal, as we remember how your life was made visible in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving. Let this gift of our lives be made holy by the Spirit of Christ that dwells within us, as together we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God, Christ is risen, Christ is the Holy Holy Spirit. Descend upon us and swirl around us. Arise among us and stir within us. Be present for us in this time and place. Bless these gifts of bread and cup. Bless us as we gather for this meal and bless 
your global community of kindred spirits, that Christ may abide in us and preside for us and walk beside us as we seek to make real once more his life and ministry in the world. Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one with all who take part in the holy work of love. Nourish and sustain us for this day's labor, and give us wisdom to see beyond our own challenges, to glimpse the realm of God, where good has already overcome, and all manner of things shall be well. Through your child, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, we honor and glorify you, our source and seeker, now and forever. Amen. Body of Christ broken for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Thank <laughs> you. 